Hi ho, hi ho, off to the machine shop we go. <clears throat> Check out how many miles are on this donkey. She a good girl. That's right, you keep on working, baby. YouTubers and welcome back. I am pretty excited because the 400 small block Chevy is at the machine shop getting the short block done. I have a dyno simulation of the horsepower it's going to make and I have the cam card. So with that said, I am drinking all organic apple juice. That's it. The things we have to say today to get past the old algorithm. Mm, that's some good apple juice. All organic apple juice, baby. It is the best. Oh yeah. So, let's get to it. All right, so welcome to my office. And we'll first go over the simulation numbers for the 400 cubic inch small block Chevy. I have some stuff right here, and this is based off the LT1, so I wanna show you guys just how accurate these RPM curves can be with real world data, because I did put this LT1 on a chassis dyno. So remember, you know, your flywheel dyno compared to your chassis dyno is gonna be lower on your chassis dyno, but we'll get into that later on. So I just want you to see that how close that these RPM numbers, uh, peak horsepower can be with a dyno simulation if the person who's doing it is doing it correctly. Now, when I say correctly, the gentleman who does these dyno simulations, the same person who made that cam, he runs a whole bunch of different cam profiles to find you know, the best curve for what I'm trying to do. Now, if you're trying to make more power down low, that's whatever, you pick a cam accordingly to your power requirements and what you're trying to do. So when I say doing it correctly, he actually measures the intake runners, the height, cylinder flow on those heads from a flow bench. So all these numbers aren't just like nilly willy like numbers thrown together and saying, ah, it'll be like this. These are actual numbers from the motor that's going to be built. So that's why his calculations are probably gonna be more, you know, accurate in lines of horsepower and the curve of the cam and all those variables as opposed to just using some like, you know, like comp cams cam quest thing that has a whole bunch of this you know generic numbers this is all based off of real world data and real world measurements of this motor now if i said something wrong just please forgive me because you know my, my knowledge is this is not nearly as good as a gentleman who actually um, made these numbers for the cam to get it ground and did dyno simulations so if i said something just a little off just cut me a little bit of slack guys and if you notice you see a bunch of scratched out numbers on here when he sent this over to Urson to get this cam ground, they have cores. And I got the last, actually it's a three-piece core because if you look right here, here is what you call a three-piece core. Maybe it's a little more, all depends on the core. So right here, we have a cast gear and then we have a billet core. So what this allows you to do on a solid roller cam allows you to run a regular distributor gear so you don't have to worry about running like a brass gear or sorry a bronze gear on this and having it wear out quickly on the street you can run just a regular melanized gear and it'll last just as long as a cast core so that is one reason why i run these three piece cores with a cast gear so i don't have to ever worry about pulling that distributor out on the motor the uh, the real cam from urston is actually at the machine shop putting put in right now as we speak well, maybe, maybe not white now as to speak, but you guys get the idea. But it's very similar to this. And it was the very last one that they had on the shelf. So these numbers were changed based off of the core. And when I mean the core, they have a hard material on here. And they called um, the can builder back up and said, hey, we have to move a couple numbers around. Does this sound okay? And he was like, sure, that's fine. It's not going to hurt horsepower that much. And these numbers right here were calculated off of these numbers right here on the cam card. So we look right here. We had the lift on the cam. This is going to be the intake. And remember, you got to take, this may say 640 right here, but you're going to have to um, take 20 out. So it's going to be about 620 lift when it's actually 
in your motor and lash. So you got to take those numbers in um, consideration too. If you look right here, you know, most of the cams you'll see uh, that you get off the shelf are going to have more lift on the exhaust. And from what I understand, what he told me, right, remember, I'm not an expert, but he said this is, you know, a lot of those cams that have more lift on the exhaust is based off of like, you know, older heads that the exhaust doesn't flow as good as modern cylinder heads like the AFR heads. They just flow a lot better. So he said, you don't need all that lift on the exhaust. We can get it out other ways. So let's talk about the other ways to explain you can get it out. So let's go down here. This is duration at 50, and this is the big numbers. A lot of these other numbers, I don't understand too much, but these numbers, duration at 50, these are the biggest factors right here, and also your lope separation that affects your RPM range. But you look right here, it's 276 at 50 on the exhaust. So that means it's open a long time. So he said, you don't need all that lift on the exhaust. It's going to get out of there with that duration on the exhaust. So we come over here to the intake side and it's 268 on the intake. So what that means is the longer this is open, the more air can get in to the combustion chamber that makes more power. The longer your exhaust is open, the better it can get out. All right, so let's finally get to the projected numbers of the 400 cubic inch small block Chevy with everything that I'm going to be running on it. And the numbers are, let's see where the peak horsepower is going to be. Peak horsepower is going to be at 6,400 RPM. And you can see down at 7,000, it's still holding horsepower pretty decently at 592. So I can take it probably past that and it won't drop off too much more after that. Let's see where the peak torque is going to be. Peak torque is going to be right around, right there, 5,400 RPM, and that's 534 foot-pounds. So all in all, it should be a pretty snappy motor. So let's compare this to the LT1. All right, so we have over here, we have the LT1, which is this current motor right here with its dyno simulation numbers. Now, it's important to note that when he ran these numbers, it was on a you know, a later update, the newer update pulls more power out. And I can't remember what it was, but we'll just say um, it was definitely lower than the 504 horsepower. It was in the, like, you know, the, the 490 horsepower range uh, to the flywheel. Now remember flywheel versus wheel horsepower is gonna be different. My truck, I have a nine inch Ford it has a non-lockup converter. When I dynoed this, it was a 5,000 stall. So all those things, it's, it's about a 100 horsepower loss through a 9-inch Ford non-lockup converter that you're going to about see on, you know, your typical, like, you know, setup like this. So let's go ahead and look at these numbers. If you see right here, this is the actual numbers that it made to the wheels, 386.1 horsepower at 6,679 RPM. So this is the key number we want to see right here. Look at this. It made peak horsepower where on the dyno sim? This is before anything happened, before it took it to a dyno on the real world, 6,600 RPM. So if you want any idea of where your peak horsepower, peak horsepower is going to be, these dyno simulations are very accurate. And by the way, this is how much horsepower it takes to run a 1080 in an S10. And this is how much horsepower it takes to the wheels, both of these guys, to run a 990. So if you're wondering how much horsepower you need to run a 10, how much horsepower you need to run a 9, these are actual real world horsepower numbers, and that's what my truck ran. that's pretty much it for this video today hope you guys enjoyed it and don't forget to uh subscribe hit that like button and hit that bell notifications it's very important to hit that bell notifications because i look into my analytics 
And out of my 20,000 subscribers, only about 9% of my subscribers actually watch my videos. So if you're that 9%, man, you are freaking awesome and I really appreciate it. Tell your friends about my channel because no matter what, I'm going to continue to just work on these engines and have fun doing hot rod stuff and spraying nitrous and maybe eventually do a turbo one day like everyone else. And with that said, keep on wrenching and peace. Thank <laughs> you.